There it is, all right. <laughs> that's not like three or four rungs. That's like, <laughs> that's a ladder. If you watched us in our last location video, we were in St. George, Utah, visiting my uncle and Zion National Park. Mm -hmm. And we left you off. We were cutting through Monument Valley. Mm -hmm. That's really freaking cool. Yeah, we had one night stopover in Monument Valley at a KOA. It yeah. was just a spur of the moment overnighter for us. And then the next morning we headed on our way to Cortez, Colorado and Mesa Verde. Yeah. So I do want to say that in our last video, I got our dates of when we were there a little bit mixed up. I said we were there the end of May into the beginning of June, when in fact we were there in the middle of May and we got to Colorado on, I believe, May 22nd or 23rd. So yeah. I just wanted to correct myself. Full disclosure. Yes. Our crack weather continued on our journey between St. George and Mesa Verde. We just have to deal with it, you know, it's one of those things. have arrived at your destination on the right side. You don't think at the end of May, heading into June, that you would expect to arrive with snow. Yeah, granted it didn't stick on the ground, but the, the peaks of the mountains were still covered in snow. We were receiving snow, it was 30 degrees. Yeah, and it was like a nice, really used to. nice snow sleet mix as we pulled into the campground. So that was exciting. The tops of the mountains were covered with snow. We yeah, did gorgeous. not expect to see that. And from what we're told, it wasn't normally how it is at that time of the year. Yeah. So we stayed at Westview RV Resort and this place was really nice. It was brand yeah. new. Yeah, it was in Cortez, Colorado. Depending on where you look online, it might say Dolores, Colorado, but technically it was in Cortez. The park kind of sits in between both Dolores and Cortez, but a little bit closer to Cortez. Yeah. It was nice. It was a new park. Mm -hmm. So the trees were just planted, so there was no shade. Other than that, I mean, the sites really, were huge. Really big, nice pull through sites yeah. level. Yeah. All the facilities were new. They had a really nice like clubhouse that had a bar. Yeah, they do happy hour four nights a week. Mm -hmm. In the clubhouse, there is also a full service salon and spa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's unheard of. I have not- I'm so excited. I know. <laughs> but yeah, so I went one day and got a pedicure. It was exciting. I had recently had my hair already cut and colored, so I didn't need to use those services there, but it was oh, just yeah. nice that they had it because that's one thing that's hard to find is a good place to get your hair done on the road. Also on the property was a putting green and nice laundry facilities mm -hmm. and a really nice dog park. Mm -hmm. They had some pickleball courts. Pickleball it looked like, courts. They were, like they were working on a pool. They were working on a pool. Maybe by the time you watch this, maybe they have their pool already. At the time, they only had four cabins available too, but I do believe that they were adding on to those as well. The reason we chose the RV park in Cortez was its proximity to Mesa Verde National Park. Mm -hmm. That was our goal. Yes. We were only there for eight days, which isn't like us. Normally, we like to pick a place where we can stay for two weeks at a time, but when we were in the planning stages, we had a small window to fill, and so we decided to do this stop. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad we did. Oh my gosh, it was fun. Plus, we met some really cool people there who became friends and they're still friends, Dan yep. and Eva. That's right. We were walking Daisy one of the first days we got there and up pulls a truck that looked just like ours and a nice lady rolled down the window and she said, hey, wait a minute, I think I watch you guys. I think I follow you on Instagram. And I said, I think we follow you too. So Dan and Eva have their own Instagram channel if you want to follow along there. Okay. I'll link it below. Yeah. And they have a cute little dog named Peanut who has her her own Instagram. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Who is really, really good at posing for the camera, unlike Daisy. Unlike Daisy. Who will pose like this. Like, look, at, look at the camera, Daisy. Look at yeah, the camera. Yeah, good, good, good dog. Good dog. So, <laughs> that's, that's, that's Daisy's modeling. Yeah. For the first part of our stay here, 
the weather was horrible. Shocker, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was just like it was in St. George. It was cold and raining and windy. And every day you could see the storms coming in because it was kind of cool because you could see the mountains off in the distance. Mm -hmm. But it was cold and it was gross. So mm -hmm. we were a little bit frustrated, but finally our luck turned and we got to get on the bike. Mm -hmm. Got to take Lucille out for a little ride. <laughs> It was an almost straight shot from where we were in Cortez to get to Durango. It was almost due east on Colorado 160 or Highway 160, whatever yeah. they call it. And it was a really pretty ride. Those mountains, they just kept getting more and more snow on them <laughs> with all that precipitation that we were getting in the cold temperatures. It was a chilly ride, and of course it kept getting colder and colder as we got into Durango because we were going up in elevation, but it was nice to finally get out of the RV and into some sunshine. and we had big plans to find some place to eat when we were in Durango, and we just drove around. It was a neat little city. A lot of people were out walking around. There were a lot of restaurants and shops and stuff, but we couldn't figure out where we wanted to go, so we just went home. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is when you're out and you're in a strange place and you look at a restaurant and you really just can't figure out what's gonna meet both of our tastes and you just go home. Well, I think the big thing was we didn't pick a place before we left. That's true. And usually we pick a place as our destination before we leave for the ride. So we can look at reviews. And yeah, like and that. we didn't do that. We just kind of got on a bike and went. The point was to go see the town and go for a ride yeah. and get out of the freaking house for a little bit. Yeah, so it was a nice ride. Unfortunately, that was the only time that we were able to get out on the motorcycle while we were there. We were hoping to get out on the Million Dollar Highway. Yeah, we've heard of some really, really cool rides in Colorado and we, we want to get back to those, but we didn't make it out this time. Yeah, just because of the weather. Yeah. We wanted to. Let's get into a little bit about the highlight of this particular location, which yes. is Mesa Verde. Yes. You can only buy tickets in person. At the visitor center. At the visitor center mm -hmm. for either the day you're going or up to two days in advance. Right. A couple days prior to the day that we wanted to go on some of the tours at Mesa Verde National Park, we drove up there. It was a rainy, crappy day, but two days from that day, it was forecasted to be really nice. So we wanted to make sure we got there and got tickets because you can buy them the day of the tour. If you want to gamble, they might run out of tickets or might run out of space on the tour. You know so we you like don't to plan. know. Yeah. Beyond all. And 
so we just got our tickets for Friday. It's now Wednesday. You can buy tickets two days in advance. Friday's forecasted to be beautiful, so mm -hmm. I think that there will be a lot of people wanting to do what we just did. Reaching for the Still really cold. It's <laughs> stupid. What is it? It's 53 at 5 in the afternoon. It's May 29th. It's May 29th. I know. It's like practically June. What the F? Fudge. Yeah. <laughs> we are sitting in the parking lot at the visitor center of Mesa Verde National Park, and the ranger said from here to where the first tour that we're going on starts is about an hour drive. The tours are only $5 a person per tour. And That's really good. I like that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we chose the balcony house and the cliff palace. Cliff Palace, yes. yes. Talking to the ranger when we were buying the tickets, he was letting us know that the Cliff Palace was probably the better option for later in the afternoon lighting. because of the lighting. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, we're all about the lighting. So we did the balcony house first and we signed up for Cliff Palace second. And then you wanted to check out the campground and see mm -hmm. what that was all about since it was fairly close to the visitor center. Yeah. So we did. We did. That campground is actually huge. Like yeah. 267 sites in this campground. Yeah, but only 15 of them have full hookups. It's a pretty small percentage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a beautiful area to camp, although it seemed to be a very unlevel. It was very primitive. Yeah, and I don't think that we would have done it. No, I, there might have been a few sites. It's one of those situations where you can look and say, oh yeah, that site looks like it would fit our RV, but you realize that, wow, getting back here and getting into that site mm -hmm. would be, would just not work. Yeah. So it wasn't a really good, it was not a good campground for big rigs. Which is kind of disappointing because I really loved the feel and the vibe of that area. It was mm. just really pretty. Even on a gloomy day, it was still just something really neat about it. Something in the air, I really liked it. I'd like to go back. I would like to camp there. Unfortunately, I don't think we can. No, maybe, we'll see. I don't know. If any of you have camped in the campground there, With in the a RVs. large yeah. RV, let us know, because I'm curious. I'd like to know if we could do it. Comment below. Look at the deer. I can see your butt. I can see your butt. I can totally see you. I see you. <laughs> You're not doing a very good job of height. We're headed to hopefully check out our new inflatable kayak in the back seat. That we've had for about three weeks, but the weather has been so crappy that we haven't been able to try it out. Nope. It's an inflatable kayak. We weren't sure about that, but... We got what, great reviews. Right. And what I like about it is that it's folded up and it's in our back seat of our truck right now. Yep, it comes with a bag and everything, yeah. so if it works out, it'll be nice to have carrying around. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work out, we wasted some money because it's past our return time. <laughs> yeah, thanks Mother Nature. <laughs> we needed some life vests, so we thought, okay, we didn't want to wait for Amazon, so we went out looking. Outdoor shop in Cortez. Yeah. Winner, right? Yeah. Yeah, they had a good selection of life vests. They also had very expensive life vests. The most inexpensive life vest was $100. That was after he gave us a really good discount because we talked to the owner for a while and yeah. explained that. A super wow. nice guy, very knowledgeable and has a very nice store. But these kayaks are meant for some serious water rafting. enthusiasts, rafting enthusiasts. Pretty standard life vest right yeah. here. Because we're getting ready to go on the kayak today. Maybe. But Maybe. I don't know. They're good. It's good to have good to have good flotation devices, EFTs. We should have waited and ordered some from Amazon and spent like twenty bucks a piece. You won't say that when you're floating in the water. Right. 
This is so cool. It's so pretty. Oh, hello, dear. Oh, I got that on video. You did. Oh, there's two, two of them. One over there. We went to the McPhee Reservoir, which like was a, really pretty. Yeah, it seemed like there were a lot of good places we could have kayaked down there. We just kind of picked that because it looked like a good place to put in. And try yeah, it out. yeah, it was about 45 minutes away from the campground, but it was well worth it. And as we we're driving in there, man, was it pretty! Mm -hmm. And we were—it felt like we were the only ones in this park. This is part of the National Forest Service, right? I think so. You in? Yep, I think I get the uh, doors out of here. There we go. Lordy, is yours doing this? <laughs> See Look, my it. shoulder straps won't even tighten. Totally like take a nap in this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, not, it's definitely not too bad as far as comfort goes. You know what? I really Pull could. Pull your straps a little tighter. I really could. I really could just like stretch out. We only got out in the water for about 15 minutes. We just wanted to test out the kayak, and as soon as we got out there, we realized we were hungry. <laughs> Surprise. I'll see you now. thing about the McPhee Reservoir is it's free. If it's free, it's for me. <laughs> it was the first nice day that we'd had in quite a while, so I was surprised that not more people were out on the water fishing or something, but that's okay. It was pretty cool. One thing that we didn't see while we were at the McPhee Reservoir is there's camping there. We saw signs for the campground, but we didn't go check out the campground. We had food on the brain. According to the website, there are 71 campsites and 24 of those have electrical hookups. And there are 50 reservable sites and 21 non-reservable sites. So if any of you have stayed at that campground, let us know. Finally, the day came for our tours. Yeah, and we were excited because our new friends, Dan and Eva, came with us. Mm -hmm. Today we have some friends with us. Say hi. Hey guys. Hi, <laughs> that's Eva and Dan. Here's a cool thing. So we all follow each other on Instagram and I think it was our second day in the park. Eva was driving by in the truck and she's like, hey, I know you. And I'm like, we know you too. We have had, um, a chance to go to lunch with them and get to know them and come to find out we have a lot of things in common even the guys have the same wedding band that's weird 
but we have the same RV. They like motorbikes too. Motorbikes. They, well, well, I don't know what to call them. Kind of bikes. They dirt bikes. Dirt bikes. Dirt bikes. Two wheels. Okay? Motorcycles. Okay. And then they have a super adorable dog, just like we do. It's the second cutest dog in the world. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's a tie. <laughs> I, oh, I think we still have about an hour to get up there, right? Yeah. Isn't it about an hour? It's a ways. Yeah. yeah. It's a mm. long drive. It's 23 miles, I think, but with all the turns and stuff, it can take a while. See you at the top. One thing we really want to stress is these tours are strenuous. Yeah, you're going to be doing some real ladder climbing. I mean, yeah, there. not just ladder climbing, but big steep step climbing, crawling, crouching, walking, a, a lot of it. And I was nervous going into it, you know, with my health issues and stuff, but it was tough. And mind you, you're up about 7,000 feet in elevation too. So if you're not used to that, you get winded a lot easier. But get it? And it was freaking amazing. Yeah. See that wall right there? Oh yeah, check nope. that out. Nope. How can you not see the wall? <laughs> it's not that far away. It's, it's a big area. It's right there. Right under. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So can you... <laughs> they told you when you purchased your ticket that you were purchasing tickets for the adventure tour, right? But there were some fairly fun things involved. You're going up tall ladders, there's going to be a little tunnel. So make sure you're comfortable with that. Make sure your knees are up for it, your back is up for it, because it's a little awkward. But after we've done all that, we are also going to be climbing up some stairs. But I'm sure that if I just came moving Someone new I would have never understood that I had you who gave it all. The Balcony House is a one-hour ranger guided tour. It involves climbing up a 60-foot open rock face with two 10-foot ladders to exit the site. This by itself is pretty cool. I know, it seems fake, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's like a Disney attraction or something. I know. There it is, all right. <laughs> That's not like three or four runs. That's like... <laughs> That's a ladder. Our ranger who gave us the tour was very informative, very witty. You learn a lot as you go along on these tours, which was fascinating to us. Both the Balcony House and the Cliff Palace that we, we see second are the... Um, ancient dwellings of the what, ancestral Puebloans. Uh, Puebloans. Puebloan. Pueblo Puebloan. Let us know. I'm sure. I'm, Puebloans. Like, <laughs> Puebloans. <laughs> As usual, we're going to probably butcher the pronunciation. Sorry. But it is what it is. You know, I can't these, even say cliff dwelling without getting tongue tied. <laughs> so you think I'm going to say Puebloan? Pueb Puebloans. Puebloans. Oh, this is so cool. They lived there for like 700 years, didn't they? 650, 700 years, yes. Depends on you when you moved in, but yeah. You're right. <laughs> Everything is sandstone mm -hmm. and all handcrafted. Interesting fact is all the wood that you see is original. Yeah, that's crazy. Amazing. I don't know how, it's like, I don't know if it's petrified, I don't know what the deal is, but somehow that wood has survived. It was in the balcony house where we first learned what a kiva was. 
A big hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it looked like a big hole to us, but to them, it was actual ceremony rooms mm -hmm. and where the hearths were and where they stayed warm. When you see in the video the, the big holes, those were covered and they'd be inside them and they had ventilation for the <laughs> fires and to stay warm because yeah. it gets cold there. Yeah. Oh, it was just such a, a cool experience to be immersed in these dwellings that people made by hand in the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I mean, being in the side of the mountain, a the cell service probably sucked, but... Yeah, no Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi at all. Couldn't stream your shows. <laughs> So then we headed over to where the tour starts for the Cliff Palace and we switched rangers for mm -hmm. that tour. That was another strenuous one hour tour. You climbed five, count them five, eight to 10 foot ladders. What, a hundred foot vertical climb? So you're climbing the elevation a hundred feet mm -hmm. with those ladders. A total of about a quarter mile of walking. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. What? It was so worth it. It was so awesome. If we were to pick one tour, it would be this one. If you could only yeah, choose yeah. one, it would be this one because this one. Cliff Palace. Was enormous. Yeah. yeah. You come around the side of this mountain and to see it as you come around, it's just ginormous. It really is a palace. It's like, I don't know how many rooms are in there. And it's ginormous. And technically, it is the largest cliff dwelling in North America. It has 23 of those kivas mm -hmm. in it. We didn't see that many, we only saw a few. And it was like a whole city built into this wall. And it was, it was just unbelievable. As per usual with something like this, the video is really cool, but it just doesn't do it justice. It was just to, to be there in person and actually mm -hmm. look up and see these tall, basically buildings underneath this cliff and built into the wall. And mm -hmm. think you think back to like, what would it would have been like to go back in a time machine and see this place fully functional. It would right. be incredible. Yeah. Our guide did also note that the Puebloan people, you know, they do have descendants from the ancestors that used to live there. Mm -hmm. They've tracked that lineage back and they will go on the tours and actually have offerings. Mm -hmm. There's a ladder. Another ladder. Oh man. A couple of ladders, guys. Alright, here we go. Oh, there's three. Awesome. We had a really, really cool time seeing Mesa Verde yes. and visiting Dolores slash Cortez, Colorado and meeting some new friends, Dan and Eva. That's right, and Peanut. <laughs> and you'll get to see these three in our next location video, which mm -hmm. is Moab, Utah, yeah. because they come to visit us and we rent a four-wheeler and they bring their dirt bikes. dirt bikes and we all go for a killer ride. Yeah, it's a lot like our four-wheeling adventure in Sedona, but we're driving. 
I'm he's driving. driving. <laughs> and I'm going like this, oh my gosh. We have a blast. So yeah, so it was awesome. Oh, hey. Oh, oh thank you. Thanks. Amazon's here. <laughs> Highly recommend this area of Colorado. It was awesome, even though we only got out for a few days while we yeah. were there because of the weather, but it was an amazing time. Definitely make this part of your journeys. As At you some point, out. yes. Yeah. As you might imagine, we can't say cliff dwelling, so there's lots of outtakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please follow us on our website, changinglanesrv.com. We yep. do put some things on there that don't make it into our blogs, particularly our technical stuff. You always want to check those out to see if there are any updates. That's right. Don't forget to click the like button and hit subscribe so you can continue to follow us on our journey. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. That's where we can interact with you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Too bad that I don't feel like wearing this $200 or $100 freaking life. Our crap I wonder how many noise interruptions we're going to have here. <laughs> Hopefully not. So we're going to go try out our new kayak. Maybe you should say that without the accent. You keep it down, mister. That's not going to, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. He didn't care. That's definitely going to show up. Mother nature. So what do you think? Oh, are wow, you rolling right now? Yeah, we need to freshen our minds, you know? I know, I'm just tired. I'm Balcony house tour and the cliff. I had a hard time saying it then and I have a hard time saying it now. You want me to say it? Cliff dwellings, cliff, say it fast five times, do it. Cliff dwelling, cliff dwelling, cliff dwelling. That was three times. How many times did you say? I said five. Yeah, you know, three's good. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Now they're talking to each other. Oh my gosh. You have to be kidding me. It's like it's so nice and quiet and peaceful out here. And now... Now the birds are playing telephone. Yeah. Somewhat. <laughs> you okay. have, are you uh, drunk like the guy asked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I started drinking around two in the afternoon. My house is a medium-sized cliff to... See? Cliff dwelling. You say that. It, the balcony house is a medium-sized cliff dwelling in the world of quiff. See? It's, it's hard, I know. It's, hard. <laughs> it's part of the National Park forest. National Forest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh. he, I think he left that tree at least. I think he's on his way out. I think he's like, oh, on, he's, right, he's, he's right in the there. tree right above us now. <laughs> Don't chat. It's not going to matter. He know, can I make all the kinds of noise in the world, but he's, it is the largest... I can't say it. Cliff dwelling. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. At the um, different areas in the cl cliff God dang it. <laughs> we know what happened to the club. God dang it. Let's give the people, oh, let's, some, let's give the people some Daisy. Look at, oh, the lighting's so good on you, Daisy. Look at, yeah, look off in the distance. Mm. Yeah, look at me. Look long. In me. Hi, puppy. <laughs> look over here. What's that? Why can't you look in the camera like hey. peanut? Hi. Well, because I'm back here and I'm her favorite.